I've been working with Fortune 500 companies, training them in presentation skills, communication skills, and pitching ideas for over 25 years. So before I start, I just want to let you know why I've been doing it for so long. Working with companies, and I do a lot of work with DreamWorks, with Mattel, with Disney, with Activision, with Univision. So I do a lot with creative people. And, and the thing I've seen over and over again, there are people that are really, really talented and have great ideas, but they can't really get their ideas across in a way that really inspires and motivates people. So I love to do this work because I want to see more of the people that have these great ideas be able to really pitch them in a way that they, 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 they get to see their ideas come to life. Your state of mind. You have got to adopt a state of mind that literally is, I am the best. My ideas are brilliant. I have incredible ideas. Any other tape that runs is not going to do you any good, and it's definitely not going to, to, to do your listener any good. Who gets a little anxious when you have to pitch an idea or you have to talk to a group of people in any kind of good? Right. Good. All human beings here. Good. <laughs> it is the natural order of things. It's called separation anxiety. As soon as you take an animal outside of its group, it starts to flip out because it's separate. What you can do is you can use that energy and change it from fear to excitement, or from nervousness to enthusiasm. And you can do that. It's just, once again, it goes back to this mind state. And the more scripted you get, the more you're going to screw it up. Guaranteed. You memorize it, you're dead. You will be flat as a pancake. I won't hear a word you're saying. And if you script it so you're trying to memorize it, you're so in your own head, it's like, where are you? You know, I can't even feel you. And if I can't feel you, I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Because some people say, I wish I was more extemporaneous. You know the secret to being extemporaneous? Stop talking. Think. Pause. And you can get it. And mind works really fast, so you'll be able to do it really, really quickly. Most people will do little tiny gestures. We need to spread out over the entire region. <laughs> Feel safe. Start at the top, go to the bottom, you know, encompass it. It's like, no. You're going to say spread out. This is spread out. I don't mean you have to fling your arms and be crazy, but this is spread out. Top, bottom. So make sure that the gesture matches what you're talking about. Pausing and breathing. It's my favorite skill in the world. You look at any good speaker, and they are comfortable with silence. But we have this thing where we think, I've got to keep talking no matter what. You know, even though I'm not sure what my next sentence is, I'll just start a sentence. <laughs> I hope it's going to make sense at the end. You know, it's like... No, it's not making sense. You should start that over. Because we're not giving ourselves any time. And what we do is we throw in ums and ahs because we think if we put an animal sound in there, that'll fool everybody. But what you want to do is instead of saying an um, you want to pause and take a breath because that gives you air you need for your voice, number one. It also gives you the time to think about what you're going to say. And then the third thing, which is really valuable, again, looking at your listener, if I don't stop talking does it give you a chance to actually think about what I've been saying? Can't, because I just keep going. Open each pitch you have with a really strong benefit. You know, regardless of how good your idea is, if it doesn't have a benefit to your listener, I don't care. You got to keep your ideas really, really simple and easy to follow, because when you get really complicated, it's really hard to get the essence of what you're trying to say. So part of your job is to boil it down. I mean, literally, just give them what they need, not what you want to give them, but what do they need to hear. If you don't know the answer, with confidence and bravado, say, I don't know, and I'll find out for you. Boom, you're off. <laughs> what are they going to do? No, you're supposed to know. I don't know, but I don't know, and I will find out for you. I know. I know I should. I don't, and I will find out. I know exactly who I'm going to call. I'll get back to you. You've got to connect with people, and that just means you have got to connect with your information, your concepts, your ideas, and get excited about them, and really make your listener the most important thing in that room. It's not you, and it's not your information. It's them. How can you add value to them? And if you focus that way, it has huge, huge impact on the connection you make, and for you, on getting out of your own way and really letting your ideas come out.